in this video we're going to learn how to use the position along curve tool. We use this tool to position objects along a curve. This tool is found under modify, snap align objects, position along curve. So I'm going to create a NURBS curve. By default, I tend to use the EP curves. Those are found under create, curve tools, EP curve. Like every other tool that I use, I'm gonna to go to the options, the little square on the right hand side, and I'm going to reset the tool. I wanna to make sure that I'm using a cubic line, meaning that it's gonna have a line with curvature. Once I reset the tool, the first rule when it comes to using curves is drawing the curves on an orthographic view. Do not draw curves on the perspective view because it's going to set up your curves into an infinite distance. Whereas if you draw them on an orthographic view, like the top, bottom, front, back, or left side and right side, you're gonna get a flat curve. So I'm gonna use my front and I've disabled the grid and I'm gonna create a very simple curve. I'm gonna click on my viewport I try to keep the spacing the same. Once you're done with the curve, I'm gonna hit enter. And if I go right mouse button to go to the components of the curve, notice that I have a curve point. This is how to insert points manually. Control vertices, which is what we're gonna use right now to sculpt our curve, edit point and hold. So let's go to the control vertices. And you will see the control vertices right here. I can hit W for move. And what I'm doing right now is I'm reshaping my curve. The reason why is because you wanna adjust the curve to the drawing. And once we have it sculpted, it is time to rebuild the curvature so that we can have equal distances between the spans from one control vertex to another control vertex. To do that, we're gonna go to object mode, select the curve, and the rebuild curve tool is found under curves rebuild, and I'm gonna to go to the options. Again, always reset your tool. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna rebuild the curve with the same amount of control vertices. To know how many control vertices or spans you have, select the curve, go to the attribute editors. The attribute editor will tell you exactly under the curve shape tab, not the curve, but the curve shape tab, it will tell you exactly how many spans you have. So if you look at the control vertices that I have right here, notice that they're not spaced equally. There's a big gap between this one here and this one here. And I want an equal distance between my control point, my, what we call the span, so that when I distribute the object along this curve, I'm gonna get equal spacing. So let's go ahead and rebuild this curve. In my curve shape, under my attribute editor, it's telling me that I have six spans. I'm gonna go to my rebuild curve options and I'm gonna type in six. I can add more or less. And as soon as I click on rebuild, you'll notice that the curve shape has not changed that much. However, when I go right mouse button control vertices, notice that the span between my control vertices is pretty much the same. This is the beginning of the curve. We can tell because we have a square control vertex and next to it, it's the letter U, showing us the curve direction. So this is the beginning of the curve. The end of the curve, we're gonna have this point right here, this control vertex, and then one right next to it. So when we count spans, we go from this point to this point to this point to this point to this point and then to this point. We don't consider this point right here or this point right here. So as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six spans. So now that our curve has been rebuilt, we can create the objects that we wanna distribute or position along this curve. I'm gonna move my curve down. I'm gonna create a very simple cube. Here's my cube. And I'm going to perform modeling hygiene. I'm gonna center the pivot, freeze the transformation, and delete the history. That is the correct order. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a series of duplicates. For that, I'm gonna to go to Edit, Duplicate Special, but go to the options. We wanna reset this tool. And the way that we read these inputs right here is always gonna be with the X on the first box, Y on the second box, and Z on the third box. Again, X, Y, and Z. 
So what I want to do is I want to duplicate this object. So I'm going to go to edit duplicate for now. And then I'm going to slightly move it so I can see what the distance is. If I go to my channel box, it tells me that this is a distance nearly to two. So I know that I'm going to duplicate X amount of copies on the X direction at a distance of two. So let's select this guy and delete it. We don't need it anymore. So I'm going to select this cube right here under the translate input. I'm going to find the X input, which is right here. And I'm going to type in two. That is the distance that I want the duplicates to move. And under number of copies, I'm going to type in 12. I'm going to click on duplicate special. And there you have it. You've duplicated this cube right here 12 times with a distance of two. So now we are going to use our position along the curve tool. So I'm going to select all of my cubes, shift, select the curve. And we're going to go to modify snap align objects position along the curve. Notice that there is no options for this tool. So as soon as I click right here, it is going to position the 13 cubes, the original plus the 12 copies along this curve. There we have it. And because this curve had equal distance between its controlled vertices, we got a very well distributed position of our cubes. So this is how we use the position along a curve tool in Maya.